I'm going to go through six different kettlebell movements. I would like to think of these as some of the easier ones to learn, easier ones to instruct, uh, especially if you're there home alone. I just want to give you some good cues and things to think about so you won't hurt yourself. In this circuit, I like to call walk in the park. Doesn't mean it's easy. These might be easier to learn. We're going to go against the clock when the workout uh, begins, but right now we're just going to go through some instructional. You can take a break anytime you want. Keep that in mind. This is a beginner workout, and I think that your goal should be to stay with the clock, and whenever you can get there, you know it's time to move up to maybe a little bit more difficult circuit, uh, or one of the other ones on the site. The first movement is going to be a swing. You have to be careful when picking up this bell, so I like to walk up on it so it's at least between my feet, if not behind me. So when I pick that bell up, I have to push my weight back onto those heels to pick the bell up, where if it was in front of me, I'd have to lean forward and I could pick it up on my toes. There's only one movement in this whole circuit, and that's going to be our lunge, the last movement of the circuit that you would ever go to your toes in, in these movements. Every other, all the other five movements, you don't go to your toes ever. So I'm gonna pick that weight up behind me and I'll be here. The first movement, swing. It's a very simple movement, but there is things you have to look out for. You don't wanna be lifting too much with your shoulders and you don't wanna be letting your knees come forward so your weight goes to your toes at all. This is all about the hip snap. Locking of those legs, leg muscles all together at once, squeezing the cheeks to the top. So I'm going to get that moving just a little bit here. So it's kind of swinging through my legs, real high in my thighs. And all of a sudden I'm going to explode. Get that moving. And then overhead. The faster that bell goes over my head, the better off I'm going to be. I'm going to keep a nice neutral spine. Butt gets way back. I don't know if you can see it in this picture here. My toes are actually off the ground. I'm only pushing through my heels. That's overhead swing. Very hard to do for a full minute. So in the workout today, if you're trying it out, you don't have to do the full minute. Do it until you feel like you need to put the bell down, take a break, give yourself 20, 30 seconds, maybe until the next movement. Work up to doing the full minute and the full six minute circuit for every movement. To the side, I'm really gonna lean forward to kind of balance myself and help keep my weight back. Biceps to my ears at the top, putting those shoulders in full extension, getting a nice stretch up there. That's the overhead swing. The next movement, I'm going to show you two different ways to do it. We'll do it two different ways in the video as well when you get to the workout. This is probably the most complicated movement in the circuit. These cues are really going to help and it might take a little bit of practice before you get it right. Right now, the horn or the handle, I've got my pinky all the way to the bottom of that horn. So I have all this room on the other side of the handle. This will make more sense in a second. Rack position nice and tight, abs tight. Elbows are locked into my ribs right now and I'm squeezing, squeezing tight. That's going to make all those muscles in that core work for you. When I drop the bell, I'm going to let gravity take it, point my thumb backwards like I do with any single arm movement in kettlebells, go thumb to thumb so I don't have to overlap my hands, high in my thighs, rip the bell back up. Right here, rack position. When I drop the bell, gravity takes it, snap up. Down, snap up, rack position. Make this a little bit harder, you can throw a twist into it. I'm going to follow the bell with my eyes. I'm not quite in rack position anymore. I'm actually putting the weight over my shoulder. <sighs> Figure eight to a twist. Work on this one at first. This can be very confusing. That snap's still there. I'm snapping that weight back to my chest, staying strong. <sighs> Next movement. This is called triple crush. I'm going to go ahead and sit back. Drop down here, curl, press, and then triceps behind me. Very simple movement. You really have to try hard to mess this one up, I think. All you got to do is have a really good squat and the rest is easy. Easy to learn, that is. Sitting back, weight back on my heels, toes are up. I'm going to lay my arms out nice and flat. Curl, press, biceps to my ears at the top, as always, anytime the weight is over my head. And then triceps here. Back down to rack position. You've got to be careful with that squat. Next movement, hand-to-hand -hand swing. I'm going to keep it moving. Nice and flow. I think this is a movement that you can kind of slow down your circuit as far as your heart rate by just not sinking that low, making sure that snap is there. If you want to keep this hard, more difficult, when you keep it moving, sink down low. You get a lot more power from your legs. Bell's nice and loose in my hands, and I'm just letting gravity take the bell down. Nice little flow down. Don't try to fight it. 
Just let it fall. High in my thighs, thumb backwards always when I go through my legs, and I'm really gonna sit back on my heels. Next movement, upright row. Get it moving, very similar to a two overhead swing, except I'm gonna use those shoulders a little bit more. A little pinch at the top. I keep myself honest, I bring my thumbs right to my chin. I'm really sitting back, letting gravity be the boss here of the bell, taking it and let it flow in that nice pendulum, that nice easy arc, and a pinch at the top. Here, really trying to get every muscle in the body to help you out on that snap, pulling those shoulders back, abs are tight. Upright row. Last movement. This is the only movement of the six that I want to see a little bit of pressure on that toe. So I'm going to be here, rack position. I'm going to go back into a lunge. Nice, deep, deep lunge here, dropping that knee down. Slight rotation into the front leg. Alternate, back again. Slight rotation into the front leg. Very, very important with lunges. I always step back. So much easier to keep form that way, proper form, meaning that front knee should not move at all. Dropping straight down, turning into the front leg. Other leg, down, little turn. You can do this as fast as you want. <sighs> Gotta be careful of that shin perpendicular to the floor at all times. The wider I step, the harder the movement is. The more narrow I step, the harder it is to keep form though. So really working harder with the lunge is better for you. Because here, if I'm real narrow with my stance, I've got to work really hard to keep that shin perpendicular to the floor. It'll be harder on your legs to have a wider gap, easier to keep form. Shoulders pull back, belly button in. And there you go. It's like a walk in the park. It'll be done in no time. Three sets through. 18 minutes total work. The workout will be about 21 minutes. Good luck with it.